Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. This is the second video in the new tutorial covering custom product pages. And in this video, I'm going to be talking all about images and displaying the media from your product. So just to remind you, we are trying to imitate this look and feel uh, of the Etsy product page. And so we have one large image over here, and then we have uh, two smaller images over here that you can use to toggle. And we also have buttons that you can use to toggle between the images. So we're going to try and recreate all of that on our Wix website. So let's get started. OK, so first step will be to um, add our large image. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to crop this image over here and make it look basically the same size as the Etsy image. So it was kind of something like that, let's say. And it's not going to be pixel perfect, but that is basically the same dimensions of the Etsy uh, product page. And um, I'm also going to split my strip into two columns. So just so we can arrange the images here over on the left side. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to add a column. And now we have two images. I'm just going to delete the one here on the right side. So this is where we're going to be doing all of our uh, image arrangement. So I'm going to take this image and let's give it the nice um, rounded edges like it has an Etsy. So I'm going to go over here to design. And let's see if I can find a design here that has rounded edges, for example, this one. OK, great. That looks pretty good. And for our smaller images, we are going to actually be adding a repeater that we are going to populate with the images uh, from our data. So let's go over here and add a list element and go down and find a blank repeater. Uh, so something like this. OK, and obviously this is humongous and uh, not exactly what we want. But we can just go over here and make these squares a lot smaller. And then collapse the repeater. Whoops. And collapse the repeater down uh, in size so that these squares are one on top of the other. And let's see how this looks. I'm going to move this over a little bit here. And let's make these squares just a little smaller. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And the repeater to follow that. Uh, great. And now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add images onto this repeater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, add element, and add media. Where is that image? OK. And not button, image. Excellent. And I'm just going to add a random image, let's say this sale image. And I'm going to crop it so that it's a nice small square. Um, and if you want it to be pixel perfect, uh, you can see over here that there's it's telling me how many pixels it is. So now it's 137 by 137 almost. OK, let's say that's good enough. And I'm just going to make this a little smaller and change the design as well so that it also has those rounded edges, just like we have uh, in the Etsy tutorial. Uh, sorry, Etsy page. Um, and make this smaller. And I'm actually going to name this, um, let's call it Media. OK, and then I'm going to put this right over here and attach it to the item. OK, so now we have these uh, images inside of our repeater. And I'm going to rename this repeater to be Media Repeater. And I'm going to change this image to Main Media. So. Now, in order to connect these to our actual media from our product, uh, we are going to need to use Wix code. So let's zoom in a little bit here to our code panel. 
And you can see here that I already um, changed, well, this changed now to main media. So just to recap from the previous video, what we're doing here is we're getting all of the product data by doing dynamic data set dot get current item, because this data set is linked to our, this specific item, uh, this specific product item from the product collection. And we're consoling the, uh, we're logging in the console, the product itself, and then I set the source of our main media image to the main media um, property from the product. And in order to make this whole process a little easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into preview mode. And I'm actually going to grab the entire product um, object over here. So I'm going to just go um, copy JSON and go back to the editor. And right over here on top, uh, let's do this within our on ready function. I'm going to create a small little commented out area. And inside, I'm going to paste that JSON. Okay, so here we have basically the layout of what our product object looks like. And this will be very helpful for us writing code, and we won't need to keep on going back and forth into preview mode. Um, and what we basically need to use for the smaller images is, um, let me see if I can find it. So we have main media and we have media items. Okay, so these are all of the media items that we have. And you can see here that we have three media items. So we are going to need to take this media item data and put it into our repeater. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function. So let's call this function populate media repeater. And what this mm, spell comes right. Excellent. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the data from the product. So let's say const media data equals um, product dot media items. And we're going to need to map these items so that each item has an ID, which is a string. Okay, and the ID has to start with a um, underscore. Okay, that's how repeaters work. So each item in the uh, repeater will need to have an ID that has an underscore and is a string. So you can see here that the ID does not have an underscore. So what I'm going to be using is just the index inside of the array. So I'm going to say dot map, and here we're going to have item and we're going to have index. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to map this to a new object where I'm going to spread in the previous item, the previous um, item object. And I'm going to add another new property, which is going to be ID with an underscore. And this is just going to be the index up to string. Okay, so I'm, I'm manually adding an ID to each one of these. And then what I can do is just tell the repeater, so media repeater dot data is equal to uh, media data. Okay, but before this will actually work, we have to do two things. So first of all, we're going to have to call this function at some point, but we'll get to that soon. But the th the other thing that we need to do is we need to tell the repeater what to do with data once it is populated. So what I'm going to do over here is add that function in. So here we have media repeater dot on item ready. And then we tell it that for each item and item data, we're going to execute this function. Okay, and this callback function, what are we going to do? We are going to say that the media not w item okay and this basically tells it that inside of the repeater 
each item will act differently based on the data of that specific item. And the source of that um, image, which is named media, is going to be equal to this source over here. So it's going to be the item data dot source. Okay, this is from our media item. So item data equals to item data dot source. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. And now the last thing that we need to do is just make sure that we call this populate media repeater function. And for now, I'm just going to call it right over here. And this is not so organized in terms of code. We're going to do some cleaning up. But let's first just get it working so that you can see uh, what it looks like. So now if I head into preview mode, then what should happen is that we should see here our main image is main media. And here on the side, we have the other images lined up here. OK, so that worked. <laughs> Um, and now what we want to do is just add a little more of the functionality. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that when we click on one of these images, the main image will change. And in addition to that, what I want to do is also indicate that that image has been selected. And we're going to be using these uh, background um, containers that we have here in order to do that. So let's go back to the editor. And let's do a few things just so that we make sure that this actually looks nice when it's done. So I'm going to make this a little smaller inside of our container. And then the containers themselves, I'm going to change the design so that they have also rounded borders. And the initial color that I will give them will just be uh, white. Okay, so now they shouldn't be too visible on the background, or they at least look like a very faint um, surrounding um, outline. Um, I could probably make this look a little better, but for now, I just really want to show you how to make it work uh, and not how to make it look beautiful. You can do your own designing at home. Um, and what we're going to be doing is inside of this on item ready function, we're going to be defining the behavior for when one of these media items is clicked. Okay, so for a media item dot on click, so we're adding an on click event listener, and inside we have a callback function which will tell this how to behave. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say that our main media, and notice here that I'm using W and not item because there's only one main media. Which I wrote media instead of main media. There's only one main media, and the source of that main media will be equal to item data dot source. Okay, so it'll be basically be equal to the source that we gave that specific um, side image. Okay, so this will change the main picture. And now we need to change the background of the container. So the container, I don't think we gave it a name. Container 2, it's called. So let's just call this background. Or let's call it media background, just to be a little more specific, because we might have other things that we want to call background um, on this page at some point. So I called it media background. And then here, what we're going to do is first, I'm going to say that um, all of the media backgrounds dot style. Ah, so I ran into a problem here. And this specific container, I can't tap into the style using uh, Wix code. That means we're going to have to add another box uh, into, into, the, into play here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first change the design of this container, and I'm going to make it completely um, transparent. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another box. So I'm just going to add a container box, which already has rounded edges, so that's nice. And I'm going to change the background of the container box 
um, so that it is white. Excellent. And now I'm going to move this image away slightly. And I'm going to put this container box under the image. So let's see if that worked. OK, I'm going to move the image completely out of the repeater. So I'm moving the image out of the repeater. And let's make sure that our container box is inside of the repeater. Yeah, it is. OK, because I see it here on all of them. OK, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the image back into the repeater as well. And I'm just going to make it a tad smaller. There we go. OK, so now we have our media inside of our boxes. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to this container box. OK, let's go to the previous one, which I called uh, media background. And let's just call this um, container one, OK? Because this is not actually important to us. Container unique 11, OK? It doesn't really matter. It's just a random name. Because the one that's important for us to name is this container box over here, which we will call media background. OK? And this is the one that we can access with code. So media background dot style, uh, background color. And we're going to say this should be equal to white. OK, so basically what I do is that when I click on one of these, I make all of the backgrounds white. And then I'm going to make the background for the specific item that we clicked on. So item media background. Um, media, whoops, I forgot the pound sign, media background, dot style, dot background color equals to black. Okay, and this should basically look like we're only giving a border to the one that we selected. So let's go ahead and preview this. OK, so now we have our items here on the side. And if I click this one, for example, then you see that the main media changes to that one, and it gets the black border. And if I switch to this one, then the same thing happens. And OK, that looks pretty good. Uh, but if I go here to Etsy, you'll see that there's always one of them selected. OK, so um, whenever, even when I first visit the page, one of them is selected. And to get that effect, what we're going to do is go back to the editor. And first of all, I'm going to make these images just a little closer, just so they look a little better. So uh, layout, and let's change the vertical spacing to, let's say, 5 pixels, uh, just so it's aesthetically a little nicer. And then here, what I'm going to do is when we're setting up our media repeater, I'm going to tell it that I'm going to add here index, okay, which is another property, uh, another parameter that could be passed into this callback function. And I'm going to say that if index is equal to zero, okay, if it's the first item, then we're going to change the background to black. Okay, and that way, it should start off um, how we want. Uh, let's see if I can tap into opacity. I don't think I can. Let's see. Style dot opacity. No, that's not an option. Okay, so that's something that won't be um, that won't be possible using code. But for example, if you wanted to mimic this kind of, you know, opacity, um, then we could add another box um, on top that would um, become visible when it wasn't active. For example, uh, let me go over here. I can actually do that just to show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another box. You know, let's actually duplicate the box that we have because it's actually quite, quite nice. Um, 
Okay, Wix is taking its time. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to our existing box, media background, and I'm going to duplicate that. Whoops, it duplicated the image as well. And I'm gonna change this to media overlay. Okay, and then I am going to put it on top of our media. And I'm gonna give it, change the design, and I'm gonna give it like an opacity of something like 10 or 20. So background, and let's give it like, let's say 10. Yeah, that looks okay, not so visible. Let's say 20. Mm -hmm. Let's say 30. Okay, that looks kind of like what we had in Etsy. Okay, so now we have this overlay that's on top of our um, media items. And let's just make sure it's really here on all of them. Media background, media, let's make it a little smaller. Okay, yeah, it's on all of them, because when I tried to edit it, I can see it on all of them. Another way would be to use just the toolbar. Uh, but for now that works. Okay, so I see that this media overlay is on all of my items. And I'm actually gonna start it off um, as collapsed. Okay, and you know what, no. I'm gonna collapse it if it's the first item. So media overlay. Uh, overlay dot collapse. Okay, and now what we need to do is that if we click on a specific media item, we also want to collapse the media overlay for that item. And we're going to want to expand the overlays for all the other items. So first, we're going to expand it on all items. OK. And the last thing we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to change some of these um, medias to the media overlay. Because now that the overlay is sitting over the media, if we click, we're actually going to be clicking on the overlay and not on the media. Okay, so I need to change this on click to do uh, to be media overlay and not media because otherwise we wouldn't be able to click the media because it's sitting under the overlay. So I think that this should have the behavior that I'm looking for. So let's go into preview mode. Okay, so we have our items here. Let's see if I click here. Yeah, nothing happens. Uh-oh, <laughs> I managed to break something. Um, so let's go back to the editor. And let's try and figure out, yeah, so the media overlays collapsed on the first one. And media overlay on click. Yeah, let's go into our toolbar. Uh, sorry, layers. And let's see what's going on here in terms of layers. Okay. 
So we have our media repeater. Ah, uh, okay. So the media overlay is not inside of the repeater as I had thought. Okay, so let's make it a little smaller. And I'm gonna move it a little bit. Uh -huh. Okay, so now the media overlay is inside of the repeater and this all should work. So let's go into preview mode. And yes, okay, so we can see that these are slightly faded out. And when I click on one, it becomes um, not faded and then the, it gets the black you know, surrounding. And if I click on this one, but I can see that the media uh, overlay is not coming back. Um, so let's go back to the editor and let's take a look at the code that I wrote and see where that problem is. So media overlay dot expand. So this is not expanding all of the media overlays. Um, and why is that? This should expand all of the media overlays. Interesting. Um, let's see. Let me try and test it one more time. Maybe we ran into a small glitch. Okay, so I click here. Yeah, okay. It's definitely not expanding again. Um, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to add an if statement. And what I'm going to say is um, if media overlay dot collapsed, then we're going to expand it. Okay, because the issue might be that we were trying to expand it for ones where it wasn't um, collapsed. And that might be creating some errors. So I'm just going to make a condition that we're only going to expand if it's actually collapsed. So let's try previewing that and see if that fixes um, our issue. And I click over here, and no, that did not solve the issue. So I'm going to head back to the editor. And yeah, I don't want to take up too much of your time in this video, especially because this was kind of like a side um, addition to the video. Um, I'll try and crack this and see maybe in the next video, I'll give a short mention if I find the solution for this. Um, but I'm quite sure that it is possible uh, if we're trying to mimic kind of this look and feel um, in terms of like the opacity and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so... What we could do, you know, maybe we could try and use hide. Let's try and use hide and show instead. So I'm going to say hide, hide, and show. And let's try, let's try that. I'm curious to see if that works. And that will also let us add some additional functionality uh, that you saw before which was the fact that when we hover over it, it kind of comes back. You know, let me add that right now, actually. Um, so let's see, let's add that for media overlay dot on mouse in. And then, so that needs to be for each item. So that needs to be item. And here I'm going to change this to item dot media overlay dot hide. And then on mouse out, I'm going to show it. 
Now, I'm not sure if this will work because it's hidden. Uh, so this might not work. So we may need to find another solution to that. But let's try this. Okay, that hide. This actually might be another, be actually a solution from our, for our other problem. Um, let's head into preview mode. Okay, so let's see. If I hover here, okay, then it disappears. And if I go out, then it doesn't come back. Okay, so this actually could be a solution for our other issue. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to change this back to media. Because okay, when we're hovering, then the media is showing again. So then we can just click on the media. And this mouse out, I'm actually going to change this one to media as well. So that means that if we do mouse out on media, then um, uh, then our overlay will show. And let's see if this solved all of our issues. Unintentionally solving problems. That's always nice. Um, okay, so we have over here, so I'm going to hover and click. And okay, interesting. So that's working. And this, when I did mouse out, the um, opacity, like the thing came back, which is not so great. But Okay, so these are both working, these two. Um, our only issue is, oh, that one's kind of working as well. Okay, so these are all kind of working. Um, it's not perfect. There are some bugs that we can work out, but, you know, to go from Wix to Etsy in 20 minutes, that's pretty good. Um, and the last thing that we want to do is add these two buttons on the right and the left that will kind of toggle between the images as well. So let's go back to the editor. And first we're gonna to need to add in our buttons. So let's try and look for a button that kind of resembles uh, the back and forth Etsy buttons that we had. So add elements and button. And let's see if we can find a kind of arrow and a circle button. Okay, so this, let's say this one right over here. And I'm just gonna do some very light uh, customization in terms of design. So let's do the background as white. And we're going to do the text. All right, we don't have text. We're going to do the, I need to zoom out a little bit here. Do the icon as black. And we're going to have some shadow. So let's add shadow. Excellent. Let's give it a nice large blur. So let's say 30. Um, and we're going to have, yeah, so that looks good. And then just lower this to like, I don't know, 30, 28. There we go. That kind of looks a little bit like the Etsy one now. Um, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it. We need one for each side. And I'm just going to move this. I'm going to make my main image a little smaller just so it all fits. Uh, let's move these this repeater over slightly. Yeah, you kind of have to work out how to make everything work here um, because we're using the regular editor, which is not um, really very responsive. Uh, so you kind of just have to play around in terms of uh, rotating this to the round 90 degrees. And let's rotate this one the other way. Oh, man. Yeah, this is always a challenge. 
and to 70. Thank you for being very patient. Uh, and I'm going to put these two buttons just towards the bottom, uh, which is a slight deviation from the Etsy design, but um, that's what's going to work for now with my design here on the website. Uh, and I'm going to rename these buttons. So this one will be um, Next Media, Next Media button. And the other one will be Creve Media button. OK, so we can use these in our code. OK, so now we kind of need to think what is going to happen when we click these buttons. So let's go and zoom in a little bit. And basically, what we want to do is we need to keep track of which media we're on. Um, and in order to do that, let's say over here, no. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable uh, up here on top that's going to be our product. OK, and I'm going to call it this product. And this is something we were going to do eventually. And basically, this product is going to store all of the information that you see here. And so in our inside of our dynamic data set, this is going to be, instead of product, this is going to be this product. Oops. Product. And I just need to change all of these also to this product. And the reason I'm calling it this product and not just plain product is because inside of the Wix API, um, we often need to use the word product. And I just don't want to get confused between the two. So I want something quite distinct. And we don't really need this console.log anymore because we have all the information up on top. And now what I want to do is I want to add the event listeners for those two buttons. So next media button dot on click. And I'm going to create another global variable up here on top. And let's say let current media. OK, just so we keep track of which media we're on right now. And it's going to start off as 0, because we're always going to be starting off with the main media being the index 0 um, from our um, media items. OK, that's just the default. And when we click on this, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to say um, main media, uh, sorry, current media plus equals one. OK, so we're adding one to our main media. And then we're going to say that main media dot source equals this product dot media items um, one dot source. Uh, sorry, not one, but current media. Okay, and we're only going to do this in the condition that we haven't exceeded the amount of media. So that will only be if um, if current media is um, not sorry if current media is equal to the um, this product dot media items dot length minus one. OK, because length will always be one longer than the index, because index starts from 0 and length starts from 1, uh, then we are going to return. That means we're not going to execute the rest of this function. And we're going to write a similar function, but opposite for our um, previous media button. So let's say previous media by him. And we're going to lower me current media by 1. And then we're going to say that if current media is equal to um, 0, 
sorry, is mm, yeah, let's do that here. If current media is equal to zero, we're going to do this actually before we make our change. And this also we're going to do before we make our change. Just working out the logic as I, as I work here. Um, OK, yeah. So if the current media is the last item, basically, then we're going to return. And if it's equal to 0, we're going to return, because that means we've gotten as far previous as we can. And let's test it out and see where I made mistakes and what we need to fix, uh, or if I got lucky and everything is working. So if I click here, then it moves to the next item, which is great. And here it moves to the next item, which is great. And if I click the previous, then it goes previous. And if I click too much, then nothing happens. The only issue is, is that these kind of stay the same. OK, so these aren't really changing, uh, which is kind of a bummer. And let's see if we can work that out. So. In order to do that, basically, we're going to need to execute. Um, let's see, media repeater on item ready. OK, so what we can do is we can actually. Hmm, let's try this. I'm not sure it's going to work, but let's try it. So there's also a function called. Um, media repeater dot for each item. And this takes the same item, item data, and index. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute this same function that we have over here, over here inside of for each item. And let's see if that works or not. Um, but I'm only going to execute this function if the index of that item is equal to the uh, index of current media. So if um, index is equal to current media, Or let's do it the opposite. Let's write a guard clause. So if return. And then here, I'm going to add this same function, which let's see if I can abstract it out. Um, I think I can. Const call this handle media items. And this is going to be equal to this entire callback function over here. So I'm just going to grab that. Um, let's see, over up until here. And I'm going to put that right over here. And here, I'm just going to write handle media items. And then here as well, I'm going to execute handle media items right over here. And I'm going to pass in these three. OK, fingers crossed. Let's see if this works. So preview. And let's go to the next one. And it did not work. But this is still working, which is nice. <laughs> um, oh, no. OK, the back button is working. Forward button is working. But it's not changing anything um, over here. So I kind of need to double check the Wix API in terms of what for each item will do. Um, yeah, it could be I'm just getting some things slightly wrong here. Um, let 
Let me try copying the original Oh, because these are all on click. I see where, where my problem might be. Um, so I actually don't want to do this on click. I actually want to do this. OK, OK, let's see. I actually only want to do this um, and not on click. I just want to do it. Um, so I'm going to put that over here instead. And let's see if that helps. So I'm going to preview that. And let's try this. I'm going to change. Yay, it worked. OK, but it didn't work for the back yet because I didn't put it into that function. So I'm going to copy this over. Um, yeah, so this actually I can wrap into a function. Um, let's say. Let's say, I don't know, media item handler or buttons. <laughs> Being very specific here. Um, and that's going to be equal to a function which basically just runs this. Uh, and let's pass in current media. And then I'm just going to copy this right over, format that. And then here, I just need to run media handler for buttons. And then that's in current media. And well, since current media is global, I don't have to do that. But I did it already. So let's just continue as we are. And add that for the previous as well. And preview. And we move forward, excellent. And we move backwards, excellent. OK, so with that, we can finally conclude this part of the tutorial. Uh, and in this, just to recap, what we did is we used Etsy as a template. And we used the data from our product item from the products collection. In order to create this experience, uh, we put the main media item uh, over here in the uh, large image. And then we use the media items array to populate a repeater here on the left side, uh, for which we use the on item ready and for each item um, methods of a repeater to create this functionality with the clicking and the toggling using the buttons on the left and the right. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you soon for another installation for this custom product page series.